Welcome back, folks! Today we will see how we can serialize our response and how to validate our request in our Fastify application. We will see how to do this using a simple package called Sinclair Timebox. I love this package because you can create a schema to validate your types also at runtime and in Fastify you can also get other other benefit that we will see in a moment. So I don't want to spend a lot of time to talk but I want to show you how this works. So now it's time to jump in our code. To validate and serialize type an object in our Fastify application, today we will see the solution using Sinclair Typebox and the Fastify's type provider Typebox already built by the Fastify community. So I, you can use also other package to handle the validation and the serialization of your Fastify application, but I uh, love to work with TypeScript and using uh, Sinclair Typebox we can create uh, the validator for our object in JavaScript and also convert them in real TypeScript uh, definition. So we can have uh, the, um, the benefit of validate and serialize our object and also the benefit of have uh, the the same type in the same application without uh, uh, without uh, develop other uh, other code in reality. So now it's time to install the Sinclair Typebox uh, package and the um, Fastify type provider Typebox and see how they work. Okay, let's start from the route. So every route can have an object that describe the request and the response. So this object is uh, after the, um, the path and uh, as you can see is this one for instance. The important part is the schema property. So you have to decorate the, the method with the schema and inside of the schema you have to indicate the JSON schema for each, uh, each part of the request that you want to validate. For instance the params in this case validate the parameter, the response, validate the response. You can also validate the query string and also for instance for the post you can also validate the, the body of your, of your post. To create this object basically I love to use a type box because if you love TypeScript the syntax is pretty the same and you can create an object, for instance, and then retrieve the definition type using the, the static method exposed by the, the typebox package. So in reality, create a, a validation schema using typebox is pretty simple. The syntax is similar to TypeScript. The difference is that you have to use type.object and in this case, the result is a real JavaScript object, okay? In this case, the post ID is an object that have a single property called post ID and the, the, um, the post ID must be a number, okay? For instance, for the, for the create post is an object that contains a title and a content of type scheme, scre uh, string. The update post is a created post but with the partial. So in this case, the title and the content are not required. And uh, I, you can also intersect, merge two different uh, objects. In this case, uh, the post is uh, an intersection between an object with the ID of type number and uh, the create post with the title and the content. And you can also create uh, other different uh, objects. For instance, I create a, a function called 
pagination result that return an object with the count and the default number of the count is zero and the data data is an array of a generic schema that you can pass to the function in this case and as you can see in this case the post pagination paginated is an object to validate an object with the count of type number and the data is an array of object basically and using type box in this way you can describe how to validate your uh, your object at runtime but also you can convert them in TypeScript during your development okay and the benefit are there so basically as you can see here I can use request dot uh, par, uh, params and as you can see I can have directly the benefit of of uh, of TypeScript because if I describe here using typebox how the parameter should look like okay i can get also the benefit of uh, have them during the um, during the, um, the implementation of the function okay for instance if i comment this part as you can see post id is not uh, doesn't exist on type unknown because in this case par params is an unknown type pretty simple and uh, the other important part, to have uh, this inf uh, inferation of the type, you have to mark the route using the Fastify plugin async typebox uh, um, type exposed by the package Fastify slash type provider typebox. And uh, in this way, uh, as you can see, you can have all the benefit. The same is for the query string. For instance, here I have the query string that uh, the exploitation is an offset and a link. If I comment this part, as you can see, I cannot uh, destruct the query because offset and limit are not part of an unknown type. So using this approach, you can create your schema and validate the, the data from the request. And the same is for the response. For instance, in this case, the response is a 200 and the, the response is a post. As you can see here, the post is uh, this type of post. Okay, this post contain this post is uh, created uh, with uh, ID, title, content, created at and updated at. It's not a problem if uh, this uh, object contains uh, more than the property expected by this by the validation when uh, at runtime when you send the response fastify clean the object from the um, from the from the property not required for the response and and uh, the response will be uh, the same expected from the schema so we will see it uh, in a moment but uh, Basically, you don't have to remap the, the object uh, with the same type, but if uh, you have a if you have more than uh, more property than the property required, it's not a problem. Fastify clean the object for you without any problem. The important part is that you have to indicate how the request uh, should look like, and uh, now we can see this result. Uh, this uh, approach in action okay so we can open our terminal and run again the application and then we can get again our our um, postman and for instance we can call the get as you can see the get now return the count of two element and the data is id title and content as and as you can see there are uh, there are not um, created that and updated that because Fastify remove this function uh, this property for us. The same is for the get ID. For instance, if I call the get ID with uh, the three, now the error is uh, uh, for uh, four zero four because the three doesn't exist. But if I call the one, for instance, I can re I can get the uh, the post with the ID equals to one. And uh, the same is for uh, if I try, for instance, to call the ID with a string instead of uh, a, the post ID string instead of a number. As you can see, 
now we uh, we received a bad request and uh, because the post id must be a number okay and as you can see in this way we can also validate the the shape of our request the same is for the post for instance we can create our our uh, post as you can see title and content are required if you pass only the title the response now is a 400 and because the body must have required property content if i pass the content now i can send again the request and as you can see here there is the title basically the, um, this is a problem we will see the um the the created that the updated that just because i think i forgot to indicate the response yes this is the problem as you can see here i can say status 201 and if i go back to my post as you can see i can call again the the post and the result now has only id title and content pretty simple and in this way you can uh, validate and serialize your response you can validate your request and serialize your response and in this way the response is like expected in your scheme so you can also pass in the in the response an object with many other property don't worry fastify clean the object for you without any problem and uh, also the way how fastify clean the the object is uh, one of the best uh, that you can find uh, in uh, in the node environment basically and now before closing i also want to talk uh, uh, a bit about uh, another pa another package called uh, fastify sensible if you install in your fastify application fastify sensible you can uh, get uh, some benefit uh, from this uh, package for instance uh, if you want to send a 404 status and not found response, you can use the app.http error. So this, uh, this object is, uh, is an object created thanks to uh, Fastify Sensible and you can call the not found error. So in this case, you can throw this uh, this method and uh, the result is that you can send to the client a not found response the same is uh, if you want to i don't know call uh, um, call uh, another kind of error so here there are a different kind of error you can call the bad gateway bad request conflict create error and uh, whatever you want so you can call this method and in this way you don't have to set the reply dot status to 404 and then call the send but just throw the the error with the name expected by the method in this case not found you can do this in a very simple way there are also other benefits in fastify sensible but i think for now it's uh, the, it's good enough for our series and uh, that's it from the serialization and validation and now it's time to jump to the conclusion it's time to wrap up folks so today you learn how to serialize your response and validate your request using timebox in fastify as you can see create a schema a schema validation using timebox uh, timebox is a really piece of cake and the syntax is pretty similar to TypeScript. Then also convert the schema in a type types is a really piece of cake and using the fastify type provider type box we already get all this benefit out of the box. And uh, as you can see also now our uh, API are secure in terms of data that we can receive and we can validate we can validate what we receive from the client and then also serialize in the best way the response as expected. So 
I think that's all from this video and in the next video we will see how we can interact with a database using, a Fastify, using Fastify and Kisley. Is, uh, Kisley is a simple uh, query builder in, uh, for Node.js. So now it's time to close. So I hope you enjoy this content and if you like it please hit the like button below. And if you want to stay updated with my content please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, happy coding and see you soon. Bye bye!